everyone. So for today's video, I wanted to go ahead and give you a tour of all of my house plants. So I know I don't do a lot of house plant stuff on here, or I do in the winter when the garden isn't open, but I do love having house plants, but it's a different kind of love than what I have for the garden. So I like to be surrounded by the greenery, but I definitely don't do as much care and maintenance as compared to my garden. So I really prefer to have as low maintenance of house plants as possible. So a little bit of backstory. I first started getting into house plants, I want to say maybe 2017, 2018, because I wasn't able to garden then. So I just kind of started getting a few plants. I had no idea what they were. They were mostly from Home Depot um, and I killed most of them fairly quickly, I would say. I didn't know at the time that overwatering a plant was a thing. Um, but then when we moved into our last final place that we were renting, um, I was like, you know what? I want to go. I've heard about this uh, garden center called Gethsemane. I was calling it just the main at the time. And I really want to go and like get some nice house plants. So I went there and I got two plants that I'll show you because I did still manage to keep those alive after all of these years. And that kind of started the houseplant addiction. Uh, I know I've mentioned this before, but I feel like when any, whenever anyone starts getting into houseplants, you want to get as many as possible. You start propagating them and creating even more plants than you already have, which I think most of my plants in here might be propagations. I'll kind of point out which ones are and which ones aren't as I tour you around. Um, but then last winter, I finally got to the point where I was like, I have a bunch of these houseplants. I don't really love them all. And a lot of them are just kind of laying around taking up space. Um, and when we moved in here too, we used to have a lot of southern facing windows, south facing windows, so we got a lot of light. So the plants that really thrive in highlight situations did great. Here we have east and west, so still a good amount, but not as much. And I can tell that some of the plants that like more direct light aren't quite as happy here. So I did go on a plant no buy last year, not a no propagation, but a no buy. And I think I did that for like six to seven months. I got a couple plants this year, house plants, but again, nothing really crazy. So I think I'm kind of paring down the plants that I love, finding the spot that I love them in. And that's going to be a thing when we redo this whole room um, is obviously getting plants in the right spot where they kind of go with the whole like flow of the room, but also have all of the light requirements that they need. So let me go ahead and I will show you around and talk to you about all of the house plants that I have. Oh, I also wanted to mention that at this point, so the garden, you know, I've kind of just been putting it to sleep. I haven't really been paying much attention to my house plants. I basically ignore them throughout the garden season except for watering and fertilizing them once a month. Um, so there's like yellow leaves. I hope I don't see any pests when I go through and show you my house plants. I've forgotten to water a few of them before I went out of town, so. Some of them are not in great shape, but most of them are. So let's go ahead and take a look. So right now I'm standing by the doors that go out to the back garden deck. And this is the side of the room that looks, again, kind of the most put together. What I did is I brought in my ferns that were in the garden. So I have this one here and then one in the back corner there. I have no idea how to take care of ferns inside. Don't really have much of an idea how to take care of them outside. I've heard they can be fussy inside. There's some brown on the leaves, but I think that was there because I left them out probably longer than I should have. Um, I mean, they haven't died yet. So let me know if there's any special fern care tips that you have. Um, I'll move these back outside, assuming they live throughout the winter, but I do like the bulk of them, like how big they are and the leaf texture and what they add to the room, especially in this corner there because I just need something with more height. So I actually have that on one of the stands that I was using as an herb rack in the garden. Um, ignore those branches. That's where I was drying all the gomfrina that's now on my Christmas tree. But now we'll head over here to one of my original house plants, which is this snake plant right here. So first off, I love the container it's in. I got that at a thrift store. Um, but second off, you may notice that this plant is a little droopy. So let me tell you why that is. So with snake plants, you actually don't have to water them very often. I think I watered this one about once every three months. And actually at Gethsemane, if you are ever in the area and visit their, their staff, it's in 
incredibly knowledgeable, but they told me that instead of sticking my finger in the top of the pot and seeing if it's dry like I normally do, stick your finger in the drain hole in the bottom of the pot, and if that's dry, then water it. And if it's moist, don't water it. So yeah, I was watering this about once every three months. In the garden season, I like to drag my hose in and water all of my house plants because it makes it go a lot faster than filling up a pitcher. And so that's what I was doing. Now the handle on the hose on the back deck sometimes gets stuck in the on position. Not that often, but sometimes. I will be replacing that handle next year. Um, but basically that happened while the hose was inside of this pot. And I was like, okay, it won't turn off. I have to run to the faucet, but I can't leave the hose in here because it's going to flood it, but I also can't pull the hose out. So I was kind of just letting a lot of water run into this before I eventually just ran as quickly as I could back outside and did get some water on the floor, but not a ton. So basically I overwatered this guy and he started to droop. I haven't watered him since. It's been probably over a month since that happened. I'm hoping it doesn't die completely. So we'll see if it does or not. But this was one of my original two, so I'm really hoping that it doesn't die. Sorry about that. Then behind the snake plant, we have this philodendron, which I love the way that this drapes over this plant stand. I just got this plant stand from my aunt, and I don't think this is a propagation. I think this is one of the original philodendrons that I got and then propagated a bunch of other philodendrons from. So there's that, and then up here, we have one of my favorite things that I've made. I call this my plant curtain, even though it's not technically functioning as a curtain. Um, but what I did is I have a flower box here and all of this is propagations, both philodendron and pothos propagations. I like the philodendrons a bit more because they fill up and thicken up, especially along the top, a lot more than the pothos do. But I just love this combination and I really like the kind of decor aspect that it adds to this room. So yeah, I really like that. I think I started it two winters ago and I have trimmed quite a bit because I'm obviously not uh, letting it go behind the couch or I don't need to because you can't see it. So I've been trimming them. Looks like I might need to trim a couple right now. Uh, I trim them, I propagate them in water, let the roots go and then put them back in here. At some point, I'm probably going to have to like divide this or something, but so far it hasn't died. So I will worry about that if any issues start to arise. Down here on this table, I have another little snake plant. I'm pretty sure this is one I purchased as well and not a propagation, although I have propagated this one. Um, so you can just kind of dig up like these little shoots that grow out, um, repotted it, it'll make more leaves. And I have gifted that to a friend. I really like snake plants. I think they're the easiest to take care of as long as you ignore them because that is what they like. Back here, I always forget the name of this. I'm not the best at remembering all the plant names, but I'm pretty sure it's a cordyline plant. Um, and this one I got because it was the cheapest one at the garden center that had the most height, but I really like it. It's been really easy to take care of. Um, I water it, I think this one. So I have a few plants that kind of get watered once a week others that get watered maybe once every two weeks. I think this one is on the once a week schedule. I always check to see if the soil is dry before watering it, but I've had a lot of new growth. I think it was maybe like here when I got it and all of this is new growth. So I really like that plant. The other fern is just tucked back there. Then I have my ZZ plant. These are also, I feel like really easy to take care of. Um, I water it slightly more frequently than my snake plant, but I don't even know if I water this every two weeks. It might be kind of every three, potentially four weeks that it needs water. It especially slows down, obviously, during winter, but I love this one as well. I think I divided this one and gave part of it to a friend, but these grow so quickly. I think I got this in a six or eight inch pot. No, I think it was maybe smaller than that. Um, I think I got this at an expo, a gardening expo in 2019, and it's just grown incredibly fast. Up here, I have my little candelabra propagation station that I made. So I got the candelabra from a thrift store. I measured and then ordered test tubes that were the same diameter and super glued them in. And right now I only have one vine in here propagating 
but I really love how this looks. And I like when I can figure out a way to make something useful, but also beautiful. Um, so yeah, I really love that. And if I ever do want to use it as an actual candelabra with the super glue, or not the super glue, with the hot glue. Did I say hot glue before? I hot glued those in. And um, they're really easy to like pop off, but they're also very sturdy. So yes, absolutely love that propagation station. Then down over here is the other one of my first plant purchases. So this is Aglionema. It's the Silver Bay variety. I really love the pattern on the leaves. I think this is actually beautiful. Again, it's been very easy to take care of. I've divided part of this as well and gave that away to a friend, but it's an incredibly easy plant to take care of. I think when I went into Gethsemane, I said I need plants for a lower light area. And then, so they recommended this one and the snake plant, but I really like the shape of it. I just think it's so pretty. Now heading this way, we'll just kind of sweep around the room that way. But here I have, well, my lemon tree, which I guess you count as a house plant now. It's doing well. Um, I did harvest one of the lemons, the other one's on there. And then I think there's tiny ones going over there. But in front of it are two of my favorites. Pink is my favorite color. These plants have pink on them. Therefore, that makes them some of my favorite. Uh, but these are the ruby rubber tree plant. And the leaves are just so pretty. I didn't know pink plants existed, so I was really excited to learn that they did. This one is larger. I bought it larger. Um, this one I've had longer. It's still smaller, but it's grown a lot since I got it. And I think I'm going to be able to divide this one at some point because there are one, two, three separate branches in here. So I could potentially divide that, but that is something to determine at a later date. So those are underneath the grow light because they like a little bit more light compared to some of my other ones. Now we'll sweep around and head over to the shelf. All of these plants, except for the polka dot begonia at the top, are propagation. So propagations from pothos, also pothos. I think the same pothos plant, pretty sure for those two. And then my philodendron Brazil. So they have the variegations on the leaves. And you can kind of see again, the difference between how the philodendrons will kind of get bushier and thicker, whereas the pothos kind of create longer branches, bigger leaves, but more separated leaves. So yeah, that is this shelf right here. I don't know if this shelf is going to stay once we redo this room, or if I'll move it somewhere else, I'm not sure yet. So that is TBD. Oh, and I absolutely love that this just has polka dots on the leaves. Like how fun is that? That plants can just create polka dots on the leaves and then just decide that the back of their leaves is red. I really, really love this plant. I think this was the first one that I kind of broke my no buy for. So after, you know, six months of not buying house plants, I picked up one of these. And the last area of plants in this room is this stand right here with all of my string of hearts and my Hoya Carii, but the string of hearts are the plants that really thrived when we were renting our place that had the south facing windows. And even though they're doing, you know, they're doing fine here, they're growing, they're happy, but they're definitely not as happy as when they were in front of south facing windows. So I have to keep these pretty close to the window. Oh, I also have a string of pearls in there. Forgot about that little guy. Um, but this one, I think I'm going to get rid of some of these. I only started with two. So I've only ever purchased two plants. I purchased one of like the regular string of hearts and then one of the variegated. And I got the variegated in a very small, like three inch pot, I think in 2019 and then just kept propagating. So now I have, let's see, one, two, three, then down here, four, five of the variegated and then one, two, three, four pots of the regular. So I don't need this many. This is an area where I don't like that. It's kind of just sitting by the window and doesn't like feel like it's really part of the room. Um, so I'm going to give some of these away to friends also and just kind of keep the ones that I can find a good spot for. But I'd say these are my favorite plant because again, they're pink and they're the shape of hearts, like nature just does that. And I think that is so cool. So I really do love this plant. It was much more pink in the south facing windows. 
And then my Hoya Carii, I'm really excited about because I think the majority of the time, I just bought it as a single heart, but the majority of the time you do that, they don't grow like additional hearts. They don't kind of put out the stem. And maybe after three months of having it, I saw a little piece of green poking through and I was like, oh my gosh, I think it's happening. And it did. Now we had a little bit of an issue here. Um, I think it was heat exposure when there was a thing with our furnace and some of the leaves fell off. But I mean, this is just really cool. Again, heart shaped leaves. That just happens. And it is variegated a little bit here. The first leaf here wasn't. So that was a nice surprise. Just seeing the variegation pop out on these leaves. So this, I think is everything in this room. Now we will head to my office. We are in my office now, and I do have a shelf full of plants in here. Starting off with this plant, this is my pothos. This was an original plant that I got, a golden pothos, I think from, oh, I hear my cat. One second. Penelope, would you like to come and say hi? Hi, come here. Come on. You know, this actually brings up a good point. So a lot of people ask about houseplants and safety for cats. Um, my cats don't bother my houseplants and they bother everything else. I don't know what it is about the houseplants. Now, if I bring dry flowers inside, they like to chew the heck out of those. So I don't know what it is about the houseplants. They pretty much leave them alone, um, but I do try to avoid anything that will kill them. So like lilies, poinsettias, if we do have poinsettias, I keep them away from the cats for Christmas, but we just don't really get those a lot anyway. So anything like that we don't get, and the rest, I just haven't had an issue with. I know saying that out loud, I've probably jinxed it, but so far they show absolutely no interest. You wanna say hi? Yeah, there you go, good job. Yeah. All right, I forgot where I was talking about the plant, but yeah, I've trimmed this a lot. Uh, I just have it hanging up with command hooks. I'll put the video up that I made of how I do that. But because this room is gonna be painted as well when we kind of redo this floor, um, I need to take it off and all the command hooks. It's also why there are vines draping over this chair because I don't think it's worth putting up the hooks when I might have to take everything down in a couple months. So yeah, I think this plant is about three years old, but these grow super fast. So if you're looking for a plant to create a plant wall out of, I highly recommend a pothos. Now up on the top of the shelf, now I'm confused because I think this is actually the original philodendron and the one next to the couch is the propagation. Who knows anymore at this point? Um, but I like that it drapes all the way down the side and I just basically keep cutting it once it hits the floor. Then in the center here, I have another candelabra, which is really pretty with some birds on it that I found at a thrift store. Um, and I have some potted plants on there. I had a third one and I knocked it off. I would like to blame the cats for it, but it was my fault. Uh, I knocked it off and broke the pot. So that has now become a plant that's in a different pot. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna keep this or maybe do something different with it, but I do like using the candelabras that I find kind of as places to display plants. Here is the Calathea that I got from Proven Winners. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, um, that I just got there. So I'm keeping that and hoping that it survives. And then this is a new plant I got in the last month. Let's see if I pronounce it correctly, Syngonium, Syngonium. It's pink, so I love it and I bought it. It's not super expensive. I don't think any of the plants I have are super expensive. That stresses me out too much. Obviously larger plants will cost more than smaller plants, but plants also grow fairly quickly. So I love that in that pink pot. This is the original Philodendron Brazil with the variegation, I love it. My spider plant that I moved inside, it was looking pretty rough because again, I think I left it out in the cold too long, but it is starting to pick back up. Then I have the ZZ Raven, which again, I love. I love plants that are just a little bit different. And this one obviously has black foliage. And I think that's really beautiful. And then here's the plant. I am killing, but on accident. Basically, I just came upstairs and it was all wilting. And I was like, oh, I think I forgot to water this one. This is another Syngonium. I hope it bounces back. I just put some water on it like 10 or 20 minutes ago. And I really like it. It has green leaves, but also a little bit of that pinkish color too. So please bounce back. 
I just got you. I don't want to have killed you already. Fingers crossed. And the last plant in here is my other pothos. This is also an original plant that I bought in the hanger that it's in. Um, I have a yellow leaf I need to reach up there. This one, I basically cut some vines off because they were losing a lot of leaves at the top and I propagated those. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna replant them in here or what I'm gonna do with those, but right now this also kind of looks like a mess because I'm not bothering to make it look nice when I'm gonna have to take it off the wall. But yeah, I really like plants that I can trail and put along my walls. That's actually one thing I have to figure out once we repaint is, do I want to put the command hooks back on the wall? I mean, up until this point, they've never taken paint off um, when I remove them or reposition them, but it just makes me nervous like after doing a fresh coat of paint, putting them on. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe I'll take them off and be like, you know what, I don't feel like putting them all back up, all the hooks. So we'll kind of see what happens with those two pothos plants. But I think that is everything for today's video. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite houseplants are or how many houseplants you have. I do, again, love houseplants just in a different way than I love gardening. But now that it's winter and the garden is closed, I am all in on focusing my attention back on these guys, which thankfully they forgive me for ignoring them for about half of the year. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.